moving on uh, on 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 this session, uh, we have a third debate now on does technology care about health? Um, I will have the pleasure to interact uh, with uh, Carlos Moreira. Uh, Carlos Moreira is the founder and the CEO of WiseKey, who is a cybersecurity company based out of Geneva. And before that, he spent about 17 years uh, in the, uh, the United Nations uh, as an expert on cybersecurity and trust models. So no doubt he will come back on, uh, on this question. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, this uh, debate, does technology care about uh, uh, health? And I, I would say, uh, having been in technology for decades, uh, I'm always anxious to start with technology because very rapidly, if you don't have people passionate about a certain type of technology, come the answer what question. Because uh, uh, technology is always a, a solution in search of a problem uh, by design. So. That's that's the the challenge. So I will try to put some some context. And uh, it, it, for this debate, I was thinking of referring to the work of uh, Carlota Perez, who is uh, an economist and published uh, a seminal book, at least for people in technology, in 2002, called "Technology Revolution and Financial Capital." And, and I, I'm sorry for her because I will go very fast. But it, it basically it says there are in well in the fifth technology uh, revolution. Uh, they are like uh, Konratiev cycle uh, for technology and basically they have three phases. There is uh, the boom uh, and then uh, it leads to uh, a crisis uh, because the boom uh, always entails excess, leads to a crisis and then ultimately when society understand the potential and it takes some time of these new technology, they appropriate uh, the technology uh, and put it at, uh, at work uh, to solve uh, more uh, critical problems. And uh, I think this wave started with the mass production of uh, processors. That's the foundation of the information technology. Uh, thank you, Intel. And then it has grown. Uh, we've seen the excess. I don't need to explain them. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we, we we suffer from from some of them, and notably the, the monopolies that have been built uh, around technology and the incredible power of this organization. Uh, so they are excess in the way technology is used. Uh, but uh, and now we see uh, we have a major challenges at society level uh, where technology will be part of the answer and we will put it to, put it to work. And and I am a promoter. Of, of what I say is uh, we call, uh, I call the planet-centric design. I think um, when you discuss with enterprise, and there is one notably in France, I won't name them, but uh, some will recognize uh, who is a large uh, tire company and that says, what, what, what does it help? What does it bring if uh, we develop the most efficient, the most effective, the best ever tire company? And if the world as we know it, uh, will have disappeared in 10, 15 years. So the conscious of, uh, of, of this overarching uh, problem is very high across. So, and, and I think it affects health as well. Health is part of it. You can't be healthy if you're uh, in a dying or unhealthy ecosystem. So it's, you, you saw a lot of craze in technology around the ultimate customer experience about the way you look and I'll come back uh, to handle your citizens. But my view, this is passé. This is the, the problem is to address the human being, the consumer, the citizen, the, the employee in the, in the planet context. And you, we should think more broadly on a planet centric design. And it's not only about sus being sustainable. You hear a lot of commitment. Given the way we consume, it's about also regeneration. So uh, Arthur will see if the next revolution is biotechnology or clean tech, but uh, hopefully they will work hand in hand and uh, together with uh, information technology. So that's, that's a little bit of the context we evolved and that I would see uh, for uh, this, uh, this session of the WPC on health. So planet-centric design uh, based on this evolution and the need to regain control of, uh, of technology. When you think of taking control of technology, for me, there are always three dimensions that you need to check uh, for whatever technology you, you 
I speak information technology, uh, you're looking at. Uh, number one is data. We heard about data, we'll develop a view. Of course, data is the object of uh, information technology. The second thing, and Carlos will uh, develop afterwards more on this, is security. Uh, security has not been part of the initial design of information technology. Uh, again, back to Intel, if you think of Moore's Law, Moore's Law is just about performance and cost. That's how all of information technology has been built. And now you start to see, because of the transfer of value online on information technology, of course, uh, the, the more value, uh, the more interest there is for people uh, accessing either the information, that's what we call through advanced persistent threat, primarily the government agencies, or uh, organized crime. There is not a week without uh, that you read about a ransomware attack, but uh, Carlos will develop this topic and then the standards. I think uh, uh, people don't pay enough attention to the standards when they look at technology. It was mentioned in the previous uh, debate slightly. Uh, it's because all these technologies are built in silos, most of them. And then we have an issue of the interoperability between the different system and for the information ex exchange. And if we want to have a debate, and I will come on practical examples. If I develop briefly on data, the first thing uh, that strikes me this year and uh, I would like to share is that how come we had two major events, first the pandemic, obviously, second the US presidential election. How can it be that with available data, available data brokers, you can manage your political arguments street by street, house by house, individual by individual in every family? and you can deliver it constantly for weeks. And then we are told we cannot track clusters. For me, that's something, uh, I have some ideas, but that's something extremely striking. How come we are faced with this? And we heard this morning from, and rightly so, from uh, the representative of the industry, be it Sanofi or AXA, the data is key. That, that's what we need, not only the technical data, but the, te the data about the behavior. And yes, I hear about GDPR, so general data protection rules. Yes, but it exists today. You can run a billion dollar for each camp, a billion dollar more co campaign and get the success that you want, the goal that you want. And probably, Jacques, it's because there is an order giver there, very clearly. There is someone setting the direction, not in our case, but I think data. And, and when you go a little bit deeper, it's the same situation. Uh, today, uh, according to study uh, done recently by IFRI on the GovTech uh, government, uh, governance tech market, uh, the, what is called the GAFAM, so the, the big uh, US technology group, represent 73.3% of global investment in artificial intelligence for healthcare. So it's another edge taken. Uh, what do we do? There are initiatives, and luckily on the, the leadership of uh, Commissioner Thierry Breton, who, who was rightly, rightly raised, the, uh, rang the bell about uh, the enterprise data, which is the last thing that Europe can protect against uh, the US and, uh, and China. Uh, we've published on this with the free back in 2018 on the geopolitical importance of data. So I don't want to develop more, but clearly, yes, there is a big topic. As I mentioned, the second pillar is security. Uh, I will uh, I will leave it uh, to uh, Carlos later on. He will not cover only this, but uh, certainly this part. And I will conclude my introduction on the importance of the standards. Standards are important in technology. If you think of the internet that allows us to, it's, you heard IPv4, IPv6 stands for Internet Protocol. It is a standard. Uh, you heard about uh, uh, Ethereum, maybe in blockchain. It is a standard. I mean, every time there is a big battle, what allows us to uh, cooperate, and you heard maybe about open whatever and proprietary technology, it's this battle, this constant battle. And uh, I don't want to refer to common goods because we're not there, but certainly it's fundamental. And we heard this morning the difficulties. If you think of uh, what's happening uh, and back to the COVID, Wuhan, where the pandemic started, 
at least uh, that's what we are told, uh, was a smart city. It's a Chinese smart city. And Chinese smart city means a security city, meaning they have all the means, and uh, we, we've done a study as well with the E3 on this, to, to do the surveillance, to, to monitor the behavior of the people. Still, they could not identify it, but the response was a very centrally managed response, as you would expect it uh, in China. And then we heard this morning that other uh, Asian country has had very good results in in uh, in in their uh, 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 in their response, and notably mentioned by Professor Flau and Japan, Korea. This is not a centrally managed response. This is there are different authorities. The the the, the, the individual rights to uh, my data, my information are respected, but it's organized in a way that they can cooperate, that the exchange takes place. If you don't um, en uh, enter this concept into your design and you don't pay attention to your technology choices on which standard you're going to run, uh, then you will have no choice but a centrally managed model, because that's the only way you can uh, have an end-to-end -end view, but it doesn't fit most of our political regime, and I would say uh, likely so, at least personally. But then, if you're outside of uh, a centrally managed government, then you need to be able to cooperate, you need to be able to aggregate the data, you need to be able to trace the data, and this can only be done if you paid attention to uh, the standards. So again, a context to summarize beyond health and for health, uh, a planet centric design, and then looking at uh, your technology choices and the way you design your data. We've discussed about it. Probably there will be other question. We'll cover security now with Carlos and the question of standards, which by the way, going back to the UN is a big debate on, on, uh, distributed and decentralized form of governance. And I think there are difficulties, but it's also a direction in which to go. And to finish on this, I think uh, we won't find big global solution be it to your health problem, your climate problem, or whatever. It will we'll need to act locally. That's what we've seen. The big challenge is how do you bring the global power to the local initiative so that they can then communicate and work together and leverage what they can. That's the problem with circular economy. If you just circle locally, it's good for the few hundreds you're there. You just don't move the needles for the rest of the planet. So how do you make it? You have the scaling effect and, and that goes through interoperability and the standard. So that, that's for my quick interaction on, on the technology uh, principles, in my view, that matter in this debate.